And during Lent, we remember Jesus' suffering, which preceded his dying on the cross for us. And down through the centuries since Jesus' death and resurrection, Lent has been a time for self-examination. And so those of us who, have, who are Catholic in background remember how Ash Wednesday, with the mark of the ashes, signified the sackcloth and ashes in which we examined our lives in preparation for our death with Jesus on Good Friday and then our glorious resurrection on Easter Sunday. And so Good Friday and Easter Sunday will mean the world to you this year if you begin to honestly prepare yourself during this time of Lent. It's not so much a time when you give things up for Lent. That's not the right attitude to Lent. That's just an excuse and just a sop that we invented to offer God for real change in our lives. And we shouldn't, in that sense, give up things for Lent and then go back to it after Lent. We need to see this as a time for rooting out from our lives the things that God has convicted of us as sin. And we need to be real about that, just down to earth and practical. Repeatedly, when all kinds of buildings are put up in large cities, men are amazed at how up through the slightest crack in a piece of concrete slab they will poke a little snowdrop or a little daffodil. Men are constantly amazed at the dearest freshness, deep down things. That's the way the poet Gerard Manley Hopkins told it. There's a dear freshness, deep down things. There's a dear life underneath all the concrete that man can put over the earth. There's a dear life that surges up and pokes its head through if it gets half a chance. And men are constantly amazed at the way little flowers poke their heads up through slabs and slabs of concrete, if there's even the slightest crack. It's as if the earth is full of life and just wants to burst forth if men will let it. It's the same in your life the same in your dear heart this morning. God has put you into his son Jesus, and there is springing up within you a Jesus life and a beauty of God's life that will spring up if you'll give it half a chance. If you'll just give it half a chance, it's there surging within you. It'll burst out. The fragrance of Jesus will burst out in you in hope and joy and delight if you'll give it half a chance. That's the truth. That's what Lent is about. Get the things out of your life that God has shown you are a, a substitute, an alternative for his life. Get them out of your life, and his life will spring up within you. Get the lust out of your life, and the beauty of God's pure love will begin to pour forth from you. Get the anger out of your life, and the beauty of his gentleness and his patience will begin to lift out through you. That's what it is. I don't know if you realize, but in spite of all our medical research, most surgery, most surgery is cutting away the bad stuff to give the good stuff a chance to grow. That's it. There are some exceptions, but most surgery is cutting away the bad stuff so that the good stuff will grow. In other words, the only hope of man being healed is the power of healthy, living life that God has put in every physical body. And that's the life that he's put in your heart and your spirit. That's why he has told us that our primary contribution 
to Him changing our lives is simply breaking up old, hardened concrete that has settled in any area of our lives. One prophet put it this way. He said, break up your fallow ground so that the Lord can come and rain righteousness upon you. And fallow ground is ground that has been trodden over again and again and again and left without anything growing in it. And so it's kind of dead and solid, and it's been plonked down like that and flattened and pressed down. And all you have to do to get some flowers growing there, to get some crops growing there, is to break up that fallow ground. And that's what is involved in a time of repentance. Don't see it, you know, as a time of negativism. It's a time of positive breaking up fallow ground, fallow areas in your own life where you've become blind and dead, and therefore where God's life has ceased to spring. You break it up, God will make it spring up. That's it. One dear man that was used in America mightily in this kind of revival experience was Finney. He just listed some areas of sin that you might want to look at and I might want to look at this morning. I really think I should just read them slowly. And you should listen to the Holy Spirit, and if He speaks to you about any of these, you should, during our time together in prayer, just put them away from you, repent of them. God said, if you confess your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You should just do that. Just agree with God. This is a sin in my life, Lord. I'm going to repent of it. I'm going to put it away now. I know this is what caused Jesus to go to the cross. I'm going to put it far from me now so that when I take this wine and this bread, the life of Jesus will spring up within me. And that's what will happen, loved ones, if you do that. Break up your fellow ground, and God will take care of bringing forth the fruit. Ingratitude. Want of love to God. Neglect of the Bible. Unbelief. Neglect of prayer. Neglect of the means of grace. Want of love for souls. Want of care for the heathen. Neglect of family duties. Neglect of social duties. Neglect of watchfulness. Neglect of watchfulness over your own life. Neglect to watch over your brothers. Neglect of self-denial. Those are sins of omission. God will, through His Spirit, settle your mind on one or two of those. Don't, don't let them all fall on top of you. God will deal with you on one or two. So settle those two now at this moment, you know, and determine to deal with those in the prayer time. Sins of commission. Worldly-mindedness, pride, envy, censoriousness, slander, levity, lying, cheating, hypocrisy, robbing God, bad temper, 
hindering others from being useful. So I know what I should deal with God about, and if you do now, I believe, loved ones, it's right that we should just go before God, and we should be honest about these sins and confess them to God and repent of them, whatever the cost, and there will spring up in your life a new freshness that is of God. There will. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for your patience with us over these years. And now as we come to this holy season of Lent, when we remember the beginning of your Son's dark journey to Calvary for us, Father, we would engage ourselves in solemn and holy self-examination so that our Savior Jesus will not have died in vain for us as we face you, Lord Jesus, we would be honest now about any sins in our lives. And in these sacred moments, we would now confess them to you. And we would repent of them. And we would ask you to replace them with the fragrant virtue of your Holy Spirit. <laughs>